When it comes to my favorite characters in My Hero, the list goes on. I have a number of them, and they're all close. But when it comes to watching my favorite people fight, that list gets narrowed down a little bit. And Bakugo is at the very top of that list. I love his fighting style, I love his tenacity, and he's going to be in this match, and I'm super excited for it. What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with My Hero Academia Season 5. This is, I believe, episodes 9 and 10. Last episode was match 3, which ended in a draw. So, so far, the score is 1 to 1. Match 1 was Class A, match 2 was Class B, and match 3 was a draw. So, this is going to match 4. And then match 5, I believe, well, also, that's the one with Deku. Um, I mistakenly said Deku was the one match four yesterday, but that's or the last episode. But that's because I'm just an idiot sometimes. This one is the one where Monoma is excited because apparently Baku goes to going against Tokage, or I don't know how you say her name, but she looks like a she has like a pink or purple polka dot kind of outfit. I'm, I have no idea a lot of their quirks. I've been very, very happy and pleasantly surprised with how creative and how ex how excelling the class B has been. Um, which, you know, does remind me that they've been working just as hard as Class A. They might have not had as many run-ins with villains, but they've, I mean, they've had a good amount too, especially with the summer camp incident. I'm just saying, they're working just as hard, even though they're a little behind, they're, you know, their grades have been more consistent because they haven't had these mishaps. So it's, it's all, it's all good. I'm super excited to find out what happens in these episodes. I gotta find out what happens. Don't forget if you guys want early access or full length to this show and all the other shows I'm watching, we are four episodes ahead on Patreon. Links are in the description down below, like always for you guys. If you guys want to support me and Patreon, it's not really your thing. If you guys could just leave me a like and a nice comment down below, it really does help me with that YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to subscribe, click that bell so you guys always know when I post over here on the Dapper channel. Follow the social medias, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Twitter, all the Dapper Darius. Much appreciated, y'all. Let's hop into this. My Hero Academia, Season 5, Episode 9 and 10. Um, this one's early bird. The next episode is that which is inherited. Let's do this. I'm excited. All right, here we go. The match has already started. I was about to say that's Saro. He's going, Mr. Tate man. Okay, slasher. Early bird gets the worm. Title of the episode. They're making the preemptive strike. Let's do it. Bakugo. Yes, me too. Oh yes, me too. I love the 3D models they're using for the pipes. You can tell the animation might pop off a little bit. He is not... Make your own opening? I like that advice. I like that confidence. Some of his support tools. I love his arsenal. But they can be useful. Oh, I love his arsenal. His new outfit and everything looks so good. I need to watch the movies. So I, I need to watch movie one, two, and three so I can do the, the Three Musketeers movie. Because that's the third one, right? Get all the vibrations from around every... Every angle, every perspective, every direction. We can hear the slugs. We can hear the clickety clack. We can hear the wind. Wait, are those slugs? What the f are those? Lizard tail splitter? She can split her whole body into pieces that can move around? So she's been improving, so she used to be able to do less. That's like the detachable kid from Suicide Squad. He could just do his arms. But she has such control. Glue Squall. I'm guessing this is Glue Man. Kojiro Bono Plamo. Semidine. He shoots out glue. Okay. And he just like slashing stuff up. Jack Mantis. I was literally saying he reminds me of Jack the Ripper from Black Clover. Yeah, they really did have the preemptive strike. So what are they going to do in this situation? I feel like... Sato is ready to save the day, but Bakugo is not even going to let that happen at all. Sasuke! <laughs> 
He did go out of his way to save Jiro right there. Okay, rely on him. He will be your ultimate attack and ultimate defense. I like how All Might said save... He said win to save people, or he said save people to win, and Deku said win to save people. They both have the different perspective, but then go, you know, ultimately the same goal at the end of the day. I will have complete victory in every fight. Okay. 4-0, no injuries. He's got a lot to prove. Baku goes out here to flex, and I'm down to see it. 4-0, no injuries. I like how we can have a blade come out of his back to catch himself during a fall to anything. I wonder what Jiro's gonna do. <laughs> but no, oh my god, the movement. This man is on top of it. No hesitation, I love it. Awase is ready though. Weld craft. Oh, he can like weld. Yeah, he had the tr Momo made the tracker and he welded it to the Nomu. Yes. For when they regrouped, they had him in hiding in case Makugo prevented them from trying to reassemble. Sugar Rush, Sato. He ate a Pop Tart, now he's going crazy. Oh, he's got like a welder's helmet too. Uh, wow, he really, he really had this whole plan out. Like they're working as a heroic team, saving each other whenever their friends need it. Oh my god, the way he can just hit someone with a drive-by and keep on flying, have Sato come in with a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Wow. I love how him saying Deku watch me, him flexing to Deku. I like how he's not just flexing his strength and his might in terms of combat. Look at this man. But he's also showing how much he's changed as a hero and he's willing to do whatever to win. He will show he's the strongest and if that means work with people, do it. He'll do it. He doesn't care. And he was the trooper day. That did help out a lot. Okay, he... Oh my, not only was that so smart to, during a battle, come up with that hypothesis and add evidence to be... But to use the tool, oh my god, to put everything... To, oh my god! The final smash right here, Bakugo hit it. He's just more dedicated than ever. That's always been his goal. Not even five minutes. And it was perfect. No injuries. Look at them. I mean, Bakugo got a little something welded in his bag, but he's chilling. He don't mind that. Great support. That's the thing that works so well. It works so well in tandem as a squad. Let's carve this loss into our hearts. So we don't forget it, but it turns us into better heroes. All Might is hella proud. Ooh. Right there with you, buddy. <laughs> Gotta play the cool guy. Besides not getting his hero license, or his provisional, the first try, and in terms of every other aspect, he's been excelling in everything. He won the sports festival. He's doing this. On, like he, If only he spoke more politely, you know? That's literally it. He... I'm glad you can actually admit that, Monoma. <laughs> I understand where you're coming from, but you always do it in such a overbearing way. Float melt stick. Interesting squad we have here. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was just a one-time thing during a dream. I don't think it's going to spontaneously activate whenever. Hell yeah. Okay, fifth battle. This is gonna be crazy. I'm excited. Oh, and it's ending, of course, of course. All right, on to episode 10. That is which, that which is inherited. <laughs> Let's do this. Wait, are we going to Tartarus out of nowhere? Why are we coming here? 1541. Gigantomachia, yeah. Yes, indeed. That is a valid point. Ooh, I got goosebumps. Oh my god. Oh, I can't wait for the rest of the, the season. I know. It's called like My Villain Academy, something like that. I'm so excited. Gran Torino's calling. Yeah, we gotta take this. Really? Right after she inherited it. The time has not yet come. A man shrouded in black. Hmm. I never thought about it like that. That's interesting. In which to become a hero, which is their dreams and aspirations since they were little, and they were talking about slowly becoming a burden, realizing how difficult that can be, especially in a morally gray world. Um, in which to become a hero and to do the duty of a hero, you must win. And in order to win and ensure you winning with a quirk such as these two, you got to do some non-ethical things. But in order to be a hero, you must be like All Might and always act like a hero. So it becomes a morally gray area when in order for Shinso to win, you have to insult somebody because that is up there with the most for sure ways in order to get someone to respond is to ang anger them, push their buttons. So I never thought about it like that, but certain quirks ethically are counterproductive against the standardization of heroes that's interesting to me oh yeah they don't have as well of a balanced team i would say i like how they're doing like hand signals not really talking right now because shinso could be anywhere they have to have their plan all set in stone then beforehand. What was that, like telepathy? Poltergeist, she can control inanimate objects? Oh no, that was Monoma's poltergeist because he copied hers. This is a tough situation. This is honestly a great situation to put them in, though. Like, I'm so curious. This is smart on Monoma's part. Wow, the mind games are not working. But he did do the poltergeist. Ooh, Phantom Thief? Okay, Persona. I love the name. Yeah, we have to be able to see your mouth so we know we're not responding to anyone else. Something stuck. We have like a web of things. Oh, and in case we can, so we can tell. How does he have like a scouter like that? What is this, Dragon Ball Z? Emily. I wonder what her hero name is for. It has to be based off some sort of something. 
She can control anything. An amount equal to the weight of an average person. Interesting. So she can do one thing that's heavy as a person or multiple small things. Size. Is it just size? Like, is the density or the... She can just... Okay. That's broken. That's really strong. Which we, which Deku knows is a big thing to Bakugo. Is that gonna egg him on? The time has not yet come. Yeah. Oh, I like how we can use the Pulsar guys to, to fly like that. That's really handy. But what the fuck is going on? Since when did Deku have the Ninetail Fox in him? What the fuck is going on? And like, if people know Deku's quirk... This does not explain this at all, because they're like, Deku's quirk is normally an enhancement quirk. Makes him stronger and move and stuff like this. Why the fuck is there... What? Are we going to injure... Are we going to injure Uhura Rock on accident? I damn sure hope not. That probably that, that wouldn't make anyone feel good seeing how happy everyone is. That's nice. That's a good reason for it too, you know. She ha when you think about it, she's been there for a lot of the craziest moments in Deku's life. That's a good question. It's always where is Deku? It's never how is Deku? <laughs> If the heroes protect everyone else, who protects the heroes? I love that. Shinzo, can, can you can you brainwash him to turn this shit off? <laughs> yes, please do something. Look at this. Oh. Please, Chong. Okay. And now he should be out of it. And now we're back in like the parallel convergence world. This guy is actively speaking to Midoriya. <laughs> yeah, he obviously can't respond. I know, this is crazy. It's literally like we're in the spirit realm. It's like we're watching Avatar. He is one of them. What? The tiny core that's always been a part of One for All. Okay, one for all itself. He is cultivating, stockpiling, and transforming this power. So he's able to... Okay, so let me know if I'm getting this right. And if I'm not, you guys can correct me. Please let me know, because I would like to have this down and knowledgeable. But, so obviously the quirks that are mixed in. And this is something I've wondered, especially when Deku and All Might were talking. I think it was season two about when Deku first brought up to All Might, like he maybe first thought he wasn't the one, the right one that to choose for inheriting his quirk. And All Might said, "Yeah, you know, you're right. If I had given this to someone like Todoroki, who already has an amazing quirk, he would be an unstoppable superhero." But I always wondered, does that mean Todoroki would have his ice and fire, and then also he would have like you know All Might's super strength and endurance, or would it all merge and he would just get the super strength and endurance? But it seems as if the overwhelming power and energy stockpiled by this quirk um, was kind of 
like what what did he say the waves the ocean whereas the core has been deep hidden in there this whole time and the core is all for uh is one for all and because midoriya is getting stronger or because the stockpiling is getting deeper and deeper or something i don't know that yet but it's getting bigger and it's being able to move so he's able to access the power in this core which is the quirks the individual quirks of the other people who has stockpiled the then on top of that one for all so he thought to himself i'm gonna capture monoma he accessed the power of the core the first quirk that came out of that was this old user's quirk black whip which was he wasn't able to control it obviously he needs to work on that which is what he's saying he needs to work harder but the he's able to act like is he now being able to access the old quirks that all might never was able to use like i'm so curious what's going on this is insane additional power and is much stronger than when i had it and so this is like the this is the last of his all for one power he left okay most important thing is controlling your heart eight people extremely strong yes so no wonder how this is the story of how deku becomes the greatest goddamn hero he's gonna have like seven quirks damn that was a good slap hey man let's take a second to pause after all that but no gunhead martial arts we're rocking with the counter the poltergeist ready for the I guess we had a little interruption of Deku's quirk, and now we're right back into the action. As I was making making a, di a directive, he's making an executive decision. Let's stick with it. I love the music. Oh, <laughs> damn! This show is getting too good, man. Well, those were two fantastic episodes. I was so wrapped in the whole time, didn't even write anything down. That's how you know they were good. But first off, Bakugo in terms of. I don't want to say his new outlook because he said it himself it's not his new outlook it's just the same outlook he's he's still wanting to be number one he's just willing to go at it at a different and more crazy method i mean not crazy but you know what i'm trying to say he's willing to do whatever it takes and if that includes saving your teammates and having them save you he is becoming more open to that aspect and i appreciate that and i also loved how on top of that Deku used his strategy to say, hey, because of how Bakugo and everything just single-handedly damn near took out their team, they're going to go after me immediately, so let's use me as a distraction. And then Monoma, to flip that, said, yes, you would think we would think that, but because of that, we know your teammates are going to be alone using you as bait, so we're going to jump them instead. And that was a very wise plan and decision from them. And I, I, everything probably would have gone according to plan. They might have lost had Deku's not... Had Deku's quirk not started going haywire, but that in and of itself was crazy. I love learning about, like I said earlier when I paused it, about the the vestiges and the, the stockpiling of the power and how that in and of itself is its own quirk. Like Black Whip, that by itself is a dope quirk, and I cannot wait for Deku to harness and be able to use that. And we have six more. One of them is going to be turning stuff into fucking whipped cream one of them's gonna be flipping stuff upside down and i don't know you know what i'm saying like it's and this show is always very creative and very on top of it when it comes to quirks and realism and like i i think my biggest mind-blowing like realism of the quirks to this day and it made me fall in love with the creativity of the quirks was when they first fought mirio at the end of was it the end of season three yeah, and he talked about, yeah, he can phase through things, but he has to, like, when he had that little demonstration of him, how he how a simple task of going through one wall is so much work, and I'm like, wow. So, like, the creator put in thought when it comes to this. So six more quirks on top of Deku's Black Whip. I'm here for it. I'm excited. This next match, mm, I want to finish this show out right now. You guys have no idea. And then after this, it goes on to the My Villain Academy arc. Come on. I am ready. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell so you guys always know when I post over here on the Dapper channel. Follow all the social medias, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Twitter, all Dapper Darius. Don't forget to check out that Patreon, early access, full length, four episodes. Links are down in the description. Drink some water, 
Tell someone you love them. Be safe out there, Dapper Squad. Have a great day. Peace.